Here's the ROG Ally 2. The Switch 2's internals also smile through the camera, and AMD finally released a disappointing GPU. But let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, May 8th, 20. 25. And I just want to remind you that we do have our PC giveaways going on tomorrow over on our Twitch channels. We're going to be announcing them all on twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech while we build a PC, but it'll be for the giveaways of the 5090 PC we're giving away on the UFD tech Twitch stream, the 7900 GRE PC that we're giving away on the UFD music Twitch stream, and then we also have a 5080 as well as a 9070 XT that we're giving away um, because of other stuff that's going on with the UFD music YouTube stream. So you can tune in tomorrow, you can tune in today and uh, enter into the giveaways in case you want to, and then we'll have another 5090 PC given away on UFD Tech, then we will have a 9070 XT PC being given away for UFD Music moving forward. That'll be the next one. So uh, I would love to see you there, and I thought I would love to see the RG Ally too, but as I look at it, I'm concerned, but that could just be that I can't imagine how it's actually going to feel in my hands because this thing is smiling for pictures for the FCC. We get to see what the RG Ally 2 is going to look like, and we actually have some indication on the specs that it's going to be holding. So there's two different versions that are popping up in the FCC filings. One's a white version, one's a black version with the Xbox button. So this is likely the Xbox handheld that has been rumored, but it's likely not going to be running Xbox. Xbox OS or whatever it's going to be called. It's going to be running Windows and then just probably have an Xbox Store app that you, you press the button for. But regardless, the specs are looking quite good. So the Xbox version looks to have the Z2 Extreme chip with a core CPU, 7 inch 120 hertz screen, which is not very much different from the current RG Ally, but then having 64 gigabytes of LPDDR5X memory. That is a significant increase from the 16 gigabytes on the original Ally and the 24 that's on the Ally X. I don't think 64 is necessary for a whole lot of people. I think 32 might be the sweet spot for when it comes to high and gaming handhelds, but the Ally 2 with the white version actually is a super cut down setup with only four core CPU being based on Aerith and is allegedly going to be based on the Z2A chip and only have 16 gigs of RAM for that. The filing also indicates that a two terabyte SSD is going to come with the Xbox version. It's going to support 100 watt charging with a 15 to 35 watt TDP, whereas the white version with the Z2A is only going to support up to six to 20 watt TDP with 65 watt charging. So a compromise in a lot of ways. However, I do want to talk about the look of these things because they clearly have changed the ergonomic design. That was my biggest gripe with the original RG Ally, just did not feel good in the hands, but they rectified that with the Ally X, making it a little bit thicker, felt a lot better to hold. And now they're going for like GameCube S controller where you hold it. It also kind of looks like a DualShock, a DualShock 4. Um, design on the back where you can hold those little nubs that are sticking out. It's a weird looking console. Very thick when you look at the screen section, but the backside looking very similar to what the current Ally does if you just ignore the hand holding part. I'm kind of scared to see what the cost of the Ally 2 is going to be, especially the one with 64 gigs of RAM. The current Ally was not necessarily one of the cheapest consoles out on the market, nor was the Z1 non-extreme one. That was way too expensive for the amount of performance you got. It might look like the Z2A version might be somewhere in the region of that as well. I'm just kind of nervous about that, but this is likely going to be a killer handheld. I'm, I'm excited to see it. Very likely, if I had to guess, we're going to see the unveiling of this at Computex uh, just over a week or so. Uh, that's when the Ally X got shown off last year, and so the Ally 2 being debuted there does make a whole lot of sense. You know what else makes a whole lot of sense? Hey, it's video sponsor. Are you a rugged, rough and tumble kind of guy? Well, I'm not fully, but that doesn't mean I don't want EDC accessories that are built to last. Thankfully, today's sponsor Groove Life just launched their new tungsten ring. Groove Life crafted this ring with a perfect blend of form and function, being made from durable, scratch resistant tungsten and available in three different finishes platinum, which we have here, 24K gold, and black. This ring is made to be worn and worn for a long time. Groove Life's patented inner breathable grooves allow for super comfortable all day wear, whether you're roughing it outdoors, hitting the gym, 
or you're just a hands-on kind of guy. This ring can be worn through it all. Our business fella and resident ring guy, Michael, wanted me to let you know that this is actually the most comfortable ring he's tried. He wears a lot of them. Groove Life also understands that when you buy a ring as tough as this, you expect to have it for a while. So they offer a 94 year, no BS warranty. Yeah, 94 years. If you lose it, find that it doesn't fit anymore or even somehow break it, I'll replace it. And best of all, the tungsten ring even comes with a free Zeus silicone ring for when metal just isn't the move. So break out your Groove wallet and grow your collection of Groove accessories today with the Groove Life tungsten ring. Upgrade from whatever dinged up ring you've currently got on by checking out the link in the description below. Huge thanks to Groove Life for sponsoring today's video. Well, I always love hearing the ring of Geekerwan uploading a new video, which happened yesterday with them showing off a Switch 2 teardown, which is not a console that's out in the wild just yet, but they were able to pick it up from a Chinese version of eBay. Geekerwan releasing amazing videos infrequently. Their last upload prior to this video was over a year ago, but it's a very in-depth look into the Switch 2. You should absolutely go check it out. They tried to boot the motherboard. They sent it to a scanning electron microscope to find out what nanometer process it's all being made on, and they got a whole lot of information breaking down exactly what's going on with the internals of Nintendo next-gen console, and they found that it is based on the 8 nanometer Samsung process, which falls in line with it being an Ampere architecture, has 1,536 CUDA cores, and has eight CPU cores. Them finding all of that out by them picking it up off of a classified site in China, and then just spending a lot of time not only making the effort to find reverse engineering the chip, but then also the production value on that video is incredible. So shout out to Geeker Wong. Go check out that video just to get some nerds deep dive on what's going on in a gaming console. And uh, just like stuff fell to the floor, let's go fall to Reese right now and see what he's got for tech deals. Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. Happy Thursday, everyone. Hope you guys are having a good day and I'll jump straight into the deals for you, starting off with this HyperX Quadcast USB condenser microphone, which you can pick up for only $93, making it $46.99 off. But then next up, we have the Insta360 Link 4K tracking webcam, which you can pick up for $149.99, making it $29.01 off. And then lastly, we have the Ava Media 4K 4K60 external capture card, which is going for only $179.99, making it $20 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you a fact of bread for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, AMD is getting a great deal when it comes to AI. Them having one of their best quarters ever, their highest Q1 ever, in fact, with them finding out that AI just makes them a lot of money. They did warn in their earnings report that tariffs are gonna hurt that, but they made billions of dollars. Total gross profit of $3.7 billion off of $7.4 billion in revenue, just making tons of cash. They're up 36% year on year. They are slightly down from Q4, but still making a lot of money for what is usually a slower part of the year. Them showing off that in the client and gaming sector, which includes CPUs and GPUs and consoles, that they are up 28% year on year for net revenue and up 109% in profit and operating income. Goodness but quarter on quarter coming off of the holiday sales in Q4, they're up only 2% in revenue and they're flat in operating income. So a lot of this just means that AMD is in the similar position that Nvidia is in where they are making a lot of money off of compute, off of AI, off of people spending big money to get large language models to spit out words faster than everybody else. And gamers are getting slightly left to the side. They are still making an okay amount from gaming, but a lot of their money from gaming is coming from consoles, not necessarily from graphics cards, as has been the case for quite a considerable amount of time. CPUs are still going strong, but AMD having less and less reason to focus on gamers. And unfortunately, that's kind of what it looks like the 9070 GRE is, a lack of focus on gamers because benchmarks finally dropped for this GPU yesterday. The 7900 GRE ended up being one of the best graphics cards of last generation, making such a good impact for the $550 price tag. The 9070 GRE dropping in at a $575 price tag, and according to AMD's own results, should be about 6% faster than the 7900. GRE. Reviewers across China found out that it's not it's, it's not at all. It's barely, it's within margin of error versus the 7900 GRE. It is essentially 
just a 7900 GRE. You do get the RDNA 4 architecture for any hardware stuff that that's gonna make a big deal for, such as FSR 4, but other than that, you are really getting the exact same graphics card according to a lot of different reviewers out there. But what's even worse than that is that the 9070 GRE has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. The 7900 GRE, as a reminder, we're giving away a PC with one of those over on UFD Music. We're drawing the winner for that tomorrow. The 7900 GRE has 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So gaming performance is identical, but you lose 25% of the RAM for a $25 price hike. So this is just not necessarily the best situation for AMD to be launching in. Now, there is the caveat that when the 7900 GRE launched in China as a Chinese only graphics card, it was more expensive than the $550 launch that we saw globally. But 7900 GRE can still be found for roughly that price. So buying a 9070 GRE just doesn't seem to make a lick of sense. Honestly, I don't even know why they launched it. It doesn't look like a reasonable graphics card compared to not just what is new on the market, like the 5070 or the 9070, which is only $50 more, but then the previous generation also sclouncing it, which, uh, let's see if you guys clounced on me in the comments yesterday. Let's see what you had to say. We got Joseph saying the 16 series is the only NVIDIA GPU series holding the line for raster-based graphics. As a user of one of these GPUs, I'm expecting major game support to get really rough pretty soon. I, I don't think so, man. I think it's gonna be quite some time before number one driver support drops out for the 16 series. But number two, just look at the rise of AMD gaming when, when it comes to consoles. PlayStation 5 is uh, selling as fast, if not faster than the PS4. Then you also have things like the Steam Deck, the RG Ally. You have all these gaming handhelds running on AMD architecture that aren't purely focused on ray tracing and non-raster performance. And I, I really think that the advent of the Steam Deck is going to make it so that games aren't gonna move past low-end hardware as fast as they might have been before. So, uh, shouts out Valve. And then Nacho Ngo saying, you mentioning the VRM exploding in the 1000 series brought me flashbacks in my 1060 catching fire. What's well, very dramatic. I was talking about the 900 series because I've had several 970s explode, but RIP to your 1060, I'm sorry. And then Chortle Chortle saying, oh no, Anyway, my 1080 Ti then only plays Minecraft and single player and it gives. I mean, yeah, that's kind of the sentiment that I always try to remind people of. If your PC runs the games that you like the way that you want them, don't listen to anything new. But if you like to stay on the edge, you like to stay on uh, up to date with new games that are coming out, you wanna play the next release, sometimes a new driver update's gonna be the, re the way you get stability in those games. And uh, unfortunately, you know, that's likely to start dissipating for these older graphics cards. And then I just wanna highlight uh, a really silly situation that happened in the comments. We got Draco coming in and saying, my computer turned 10 this year and I have two GTX 970s with an SLI bridge. To which I, when I saw this, I was like, that's really silly that you're still running uh, 970 with SLI because number one, how many games supported SLI in the first place back in its heyday? Number two, the games now aren't gonna be supporting it. Even if you're playing older games like Minecraft or League of Legends or anything like that, you're not using SLI. So somebody exactly said that saying, what are you playing these days? With them saying, I heard most games are refusing to use the second GPU. And Draco said an SLI bridge makes it so it acts as one GPU, which is, only true in games that have SLI support, which somebody then uh, re responded. And then finally, Draco admits the truth, admits what is the reasonable outcome here. I found that out a few years ago and removed the second GPU and bridge, which somebody pointed out that contradicts the fact that you said that you're running two 970s. You're not. You have one in your system now. Come on, man. You're running one 970. You're not running two. Good for you for staying on one 970, but you're not running SLI. If your 970 is not even in your system and all you're saying is you have two 970s in your house and an SLI bridge in your house, then I'm, I'm running a GTX 750 Ti because I got one of those lying around. No, man. Yeah, you're trying to stunt on us with your 970 SLI and you're not even doing it. Come on. Commit. And then we got Vic Blood Special saying, thanks for recommending Expedition 33. Love the game. You're welcome. I, man, a part of why I want to do comment response right now is just to convince people to play this game. I am, I spent like another, I got like half an hour and a half last night. And again, I just, every time 
like whether I'm advancing the story and getting to see how well crafted the the writing and the character development is or I'm just off exploring and not pushing the main storyline at all. I'm having the time of my life. Like, unless it lands poorly, which again, I'm still just in act two. I have not even gotten close uh, to the end of the game. Unless it lands poorly, which I've had many games do, uh, this, is, this is very likely gonna be my favorite game of all time. Like, I cannot overemphasize how much I, I love Expedition 33. To which Proximal said, I just started Expedition 33 today. I thought the gushing originally was just people doing the general falling in love with the game. Oh God, no, it's that good. Yeah, I don't like to do things that are popular. I tend to resist like uh, hype trains like that where people are just being like, I love this thing because it's the favorite thing ever. Like everybody flipping out about GTA 6. I really, I could not care uh, very much little else about it. I said that really poorly, but uh, Expedition 33, I saw that the reviews are good, which I saw for games like Metaphor. Um, I played Metaphor, did not like it. And then when I played Expedition 33, I was like, oh, this is, this is it. This is the one. This is, this is everything that I have been pining for these last few years. And I'm not gonna pine in this episode of Hot News anymore, uh, as much as I can continue to sing the praises of Claire Obscure Expedition 33 and everything that Sandfall Interactive has done. Uh, I won't. I'll see you back here for more of the Hoz Tech News tomorrow, hopefully.